So if you had to think of a chair and how it could be used when you had to dispose of it, what kind of design thinking skills would you deploy? Actually, another exercise he does is to uh, look at how to inculcate th the concept of value into what you design. The example he shared with me was that your cat sits on a chair a lot, right? This chair that you've designed with all your... User studies. User, user studies, <laughs> you know, aesthetic sense, and your cat sits on it and loves it. So, or somebody you, you loved a lot died on the chair, right? So, the value of the chair increases, uh, increases for you. Imagine how a chair would increase in value for, for your customer. So if, you, if you're, as a student, you're designing a chair, try to conceive of these ways in which uh, a chair could become valuable. So it's, yeah. it's life is extended, yeah. kind of. Yeah, and then design the chair. So, uh, you know, you need to embed a time frame in your design. And this is something you have to suggest in your design for the product. Anybody else you can think of? Okay, at uh, Srishti, we have uh, something called the Frugal Design Lab that's run by Sudipto Das Gupta and his wife Nandani Das Gupta. And actually, Sudipto spoke to me about the idea of embodied energy or embedded energy. For example, if you buy a cane chair, right, and you think, uh, you, you know, you're really happy because you think you're buying this biodegradable product that is, uh, you know, good for the environment. I mean, you're happy about it. But he says you can't just think about, uh, uh, you know, uh, products in that fashion. You have to think of the, you have to calculate the embodied energy within that chair. And that means calculating what it took for the chair to come to you from where it was produced and manufactured. How many, you know, what was its carbon footprint? How many miles did it travel, etc., etc. And that actually is the cost of the chair embodied within it. 